An opposition MP blames the imposition of University of the West Indies tuition fees for some of the crime in Barbados. That's our top story in our Barbados Today afternoon news update for Monday, December the 4th. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. An opposition MP is blaming the current economic challenges and the government's imposition of the University of the West Indies tuition fees for some of the crime in the country. Speaking yesterday at the Family Fund Day at the Warley All Saints Playing Field, jointly organized by the Barbados Labour Party candidate for St. Peter Colin Jordan and his St. James North constituency, Edmund Hinkson claimed that those two issues were forcing young people into criminal activity. If, as Colin said, there is um, an economic downturn in a country, look, um, naturally, and we're not condoning it, but naturally there, you're going to see increasing criminal activity. If there is a situation where young people feel they don't have opportunities to advance in terms of education, in terms of employment, they're going to find um, deviant ways to express their human self. Meanwhile, Jordan has said that community events such as the Family Fund Day should be seen more as an investment in building neighborhoods. It is really an investment in the community to, make, to, to, to create a situation where people can have that interaction. So we're really investing in the community because we recognize that there is hardship. People are not able to buy in a number of these clubs, even clubs here at Whitehall with young people. A lot of the parents cannot afford the subs, but they want the children involved because they realize it is an avenue. And we are encouraging through this activity that participation. We recognize that it is tough on people. In other news now, owners of privately operated public service vehicles are being assured that their more than 10-year-old demand for duty-free concessions on spare parts for their vehicles would be granted if the United Progressive Party, UPP, forms the next government. The UPP's candidate for St. John, Hudson Griffith, told a spot meeting at Rondelouf Gardens on Friday night that it was his party's goal to restore balance to transport sector here while reversing the fortunes of the state-owned transport board whose losses are estimated at over $250 million in the last seven years. UCAL in excess of $20 million. It owes the country of Barbados in excess of $80 million. Y'all are aware that no new buses have been bought. Y'all are aware that employment is a problem at Transport Board. So our, our first function is to stop the hemorrhage. Yep. Stop the hemorrhage of the subsidies from government coffers to the Transport Board. When we have stopped that, then our next point is to start to reduce it. That way, we must first capture all of the money that's going through the sector. In sports now, the Touring West Indies cricketers enter their second test match against host New Zealand at Southern Park Hamilton on Saturday, having no choice but to win in order to save the series. Yesterday, New Zealand beat the Wendy's by an innings and 67 runs in the first of two tests. Top scorers for the regional team were Craig Braffitt, 91, and Shimron Hetmeyer, 66. Kima Roche, 3 for 85, and Miguel Cummins, 2 for 92, were the chief wicket takers for the Windies in a game which saw New Zealand batting only once. This is regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Now to the big story from the regional scene. Part of the Soufrier Hospital in St. Lucia has been extensively damaged by fire. 
the second blaze to hit that healthcare facility within a month. While the previous fire mid last month caused little damage, this latest one on Saturday night resulted in major structural damage and loss of vital pieces of equipment and supplies. Investigations have started into the cause, and though the primary health care section of the hospital was not affected, all salvageable items within the facility will immediately be removed and relocated until both the probe and an assessment of the damage are completed. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Merlin Fredericks and other senior health officials who arrived on the scene have put an emergency plan of action in place for a continuation of services to the people of Soufriere and its environs. On the international scene, ex-president of Yemen Ali Abdullah Saleh has been killed by his former Houthi allies. His home in Sana'a was blown up during an attack according to the Houthi-run television station. Now, his party confirmed that he had been killed. Saleh ruled the country for 30 years before being forced from power in 2012 following an attempted assassination. He later formed an alliance with the Houthi forces to drive out President Abu Ba Mansour Hedi, prompting Saudi Arabia to intervene militarily in the country. And finally, the opposition presidential candidate in Honduras' disputed elections shouts fraud as a recount begins. More in this Euronews report. Thousands of Hondurans have taken to the streets to back a TV star-turned-opposition candidate who's accusing the government of trying to steal last week's disputed presidential election. Hundreds have been arrested in violent protests after the count from the presidential race was stopped. Salvador Nasralla claims he is the winner. Here you have the president-elect that the people want. The people have chosen. The people have decided. Nobody can silence the people. You ask me what to say to the international media, I say they don't understand why the electoral tribunal doesn't accept the checking of 5,000 or so votes. The National Party doesn't want them checked because they're in it because of fraud. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.